Hello. Today we're going to take a walkthrough of the Ionic Angular tutorial that's out at the Ionic Framework uh, site. It's their uh, photo gallery, uh, which is really well done. Uh, there are a couple places, if you've never done any of this uh, before, where um, you can get tripped up. So we're just going to do it as a uh, code walkthrough and actually uh, build it out. I'm going to approach this uh, with uh, several parts, you know, several videos. When after each part, so for part one, for example, we'll go through and just actually get the home page you know, up and running. Um, and then we'll do a part one deep dive. So explaining any of the concepts in a little bit more detail. And we'll just continue that. So part two, the doing, and then part two, deep dive. So if you're getting this as you go, um, you don't need to bother with the, uh, the deep dives and just use them for reference when you feel like you need it. So what we're going to start with, and this is how I would uh, set up your environment if you're going to do, um, if you happen to have two screens. So on screen one, uh, I would have the uh, actual tutorial, this web page, uh, up and running. And uh, I'd have the video maybe uh, next to it. Uh, so put that on screen one. Uh, screen two, I'd have a terminal um, and uh, Visual Studio Code uh, up and running. Um, in this tutorial, they talk about uh, what you'll need from required tooling. So Node, Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to assume that you've got those things up and running. Um, if you need more help uh, setting those up and understanding what they're doing, um, I'll do that as a separate uh, separate video and link it, uh, link it here. All right, so where we're gonna start is, uh, we're gonna start down here with the install uh, Ionic tooling. So in our terminal, uh, it tells us to do the install uh, for Ionic and um, Cordova. Uh, essentially what this is doing is, is giving us the ability to run uh, native code. So we'll go ahead and get that going. And by native code, um, I'm talking about native uh, code that runs on the devices. Why would you need uh, native code? Well, the camera and the API for the camera uh, is uh, native code that runs on the devices. So that's why we need access to that. So Node Package Manager, that's NPM, it's going out and doing an install. That minus G is the global flag. So that this package, the Ionic CLI, uh, will be um, available uh, throughout uh, any uh, project that you might do uh, that is uh, for Ionic and Angular. Okay, so that gets that done. And now we're going to go ahead and use the Ionic command uh, to create a new application. So I already have um, a project folder uh, for all of my different uh, types of projects and uh, subfolder uh, for Ionic. So we're going to start there, or I'm going to start there, and I'm just going to run the Ionic command, start photo in my case, I'm going to do photo gallery three because I've run through this a few times already. It's going to be an Angular app, and it's going to use the capacitor plugin. Again, where capacitor is what gives us the capability to do iOS and Angular deployments. Okay, that'll run off. Oh, Angular or React? We want Angular. And away it goes, installing the various things it needs. Okay, it's gone off and done uh, everything. Uh, hopefully that, uh, that command worked for you. If you have some errors, uh, you'll need to work through those. Um, at this point, it's prompting about uh, whether you want a free Ionic account or not. You're welcome to do that. Uh, I'm not gonna do that at, at this stage. And so now it's done, and it tells us we can go to that project just by uh, changing directory to it. Uh, and it tells us about uh, running Ionic Serve and running Ionic Capacitor Add uh, to add the project. Um, don't do that yet. Uh, the instructions for the tutorial have us taken a little bit different path, and we'll come back to the capacitor piece uh, a little bit later. But we will go ahead and change direction, uh, change directories into our project. And if you named yours Photo Gallery, then just go to Photo Gallery. I'm going to be going to Photo Gallery 3. 
Okay, and I'm just going to do a list in that directory, and we see that it's put a, a few files in there, some uh, JSON files, source uh, directory uh, for some code. And so now if you've got your Visual Studio code uh, uh, set up correctly, you could just do code space dot, and it'll basically open up this directory uh, in your Visual Studio uh, editor. Um, Capacitor does have us uh, putting a few other things in there first. Um, so taking a look at the documentation or the tutorial, um, the camera API is something that we're going to need to add to our project. It's a dependency. So we'll follow that and install those PWA elements. And that'll take care of that. All right, so at the when this is done, um, the tutorial uh, now points us to actually adding some code into um, the one of the modules or one of the code files uh, in the project. So it doesn't explicitly tell you, but this is the good the part where you should do you know code dot have it launch Visual Studio Code, and it'll open right into that uh, folder, and we can see our code. And so uh, where it wants us to go is to open the source file or source uh, subdirectory and go to main TS. And now we're actually looking at uh, the code that it built out uh, to start this, uh, you know, give us a kind of a little framework of an application uh, to start from for our own work. All right, so looking at the tutorial again, it wants us to import a particular package um, from the PWA elements uh, loader subdirectory and call that, um, so this is the camera capability, uh, wants us to call that uh, after the, basically after the application has been bootstrapped, which means it's basically been loaded. So going back over to our code editor, we're going to import Define custom elements. If I could type. And Visual Studio Code does give you some nice little uh, hints uh, for type or for code completion. You should use them more often than I do. All right. So after the bootstrap, after the app's been bootstrapped here, then it's telling us to go ahead and add those elements. And we'll do that right here. going to save my work. And so now, if we've managed to get everything uh, working correctly uh, or set up correctly, uh, we should actually be able to serve up our application. So there's two ways you could do this. Uh, here within Visual Studio uh, Code, you can uh, add a terminal to your, to your workspace here. And it's in that same directory. And the tutorial tells you you just need to put Ionic Serve on there. So you can do that here. Or you could switch over to the terminal window that you uh, uh, had to start uh, you know, bootstrap or putting the project together. And you could do it there. Wherever you do it, as long as that um, Ionic Serve is running, uh, then you'll have an active uh, web, basically you'll be serving up the application. So it's nice to have two uh, kind of terminals, whether this one here in Visual Studio Code or the built-in terminal, so that in one you could be adding commands, uh, you know, updating things. The other is simply running the application. So if you'll type in the Ionic serve, then what it's going to do is it's going to basically package up the application. It's going to tell you that it's going to be running this web server, if you will, a node-based kind of web server here on your machine running on port 8100. So now it's going through and it's compiling all the code uh, for the application and setting it up to actually be served up as a website. At some point, 
uh, we'll see a browser page pop up um, in your uh, uh, you running Chrome or whatever, and uh, it'll have the application in it. And here we go. I've got it uh, uh, it's come up. It's basically got three tabs. And it says, to, you know, has the tab name up here in the top left. So if you got here, then congratulations, uh, it's up and running. Switching back over here to Visual Studio Code, you see that in the terminal down here, it did say Control C to quit this process. And so here, you know, basically this one's just paused. This terminal is just sitting here running that program um, and just kind of waiting for you to, you know, keep working with it or, you know, to Control C to quit it. So that's where if you have your terminal here, you can still be doing things like looking and, you know, uh, listing files, adding packages, you know, that kind of stuff in this terminal and in the Visual Studio Code terminal, you know, it's running your application. Okay, we're going to wrap uh, part one here and we'll see you on the other side of part two.